Welcome back. This is Track Talk with a commentary on a game of 1830. Jumping straight into the auction, we have Agrijag, and they will open the bid with a uh, bid on the Mohawk and Hudson. Bedford follows on the CNA. Triple J will round out the three major privates with a bid on the DNH, and Beard Brew will join on the MH. Going to the next round, next round, Agrijag joins on the DNH. Now having a bid on the DNH and the MNH, Bedford will jump out of the three main privates and open up the Champlain and St. Lawrence. This does give people the ability to pull the ripcord here and just run right through the auction. But Triple J all the way sees that there is no bid on the Camden and Amboy, so probably unlikely to do that as he gets no privates at face and would be giving away the CNA as a freebie. He instead bids on the triple, uh, the Champlain and St. Lawrence. This does leave the Camden and Amboy still undefended, which may force Beard Brew to hop on that private, which we do see. Agrijag now has his choice of any of the privates uh, with respect to being a third on the private, or he could pull here. If he pulls, he will be left with the DNH and the MNH. So if he were to win either of those, he would be safe from the BNO with a pull here. So we may see that, which is what happens. We will see our first contested auction on this Champlain and St. Lawrence. And Bedford is happy to bid it up to 55. Will we see Triple J pass here? This would leave him with his only opportunity for a private on the DNH. So he elects to bid higher. This is probably as high as people really want to bid for the Champlain and St. Lawrence, so I expect we will see Bedford pass here and just hope to come out of the auction with the CNA. And that is what happens. The DNH is now up. Triple J has an opportunity to come away with a second private here, and Agrijag is stuck with just the Schuylkill Valley, so is motivated to win the DNH here as well. And the players will bid that up to 95, and Triple J will take it. Agrijag, in a little bit of a rough situation here, needs to try and win this MNH, or will be leaving almost certainly with the BNO. Beard Brew, on the other hand, has to be a little bit cautious about winning the MNH, or else he may not be able to properly enforce the CNA. And we are getting up to that 160 mark, which is getting close to north end of the value of this private in my opinion and beard brew does pass out giving the private to agrijag for 165. so agrijag and triple j are out of the auction and safe from the bno bedford and beard brew both have no privates meaning that whoever wins this uh, will be safe and the loser will be stuck with the bno they bid right up to 210 kind of skipping the intermediate values assuming that they would not get away with any cheaper than that and Beard Brew is happy to fight a little bit more for this. Beard Brew gets up to 230, and then Bedford gives it away. Um, that is on the cheaper end for a four-player game of the Camden and Amboy, particularly when the other privates have been bid up a little bit. Um, but Bedford is happy to take the B&O. This does give priority to Triple J, who has money to float. And Bedford will par at 100. Triple J has his choice of companies and we'll take the CNO. He floats for the minimum, uh, or he pars for the minimum bet value. Beard Brew does have money to take the PRR if he elects, and does so. Agrijag taking the NYH. So the three pretty much most common starting companies have now floated or parred, and the BNO is left. He doesn't have enough money to float on his own, may just sit on his cash and enjoy that private income, or may try to invest in the other companies. Looks like for now he's content, and the rest of the players will be just floating their companies. And we pass into the next stock round. That means that the BNO player, Bedford, uh, has priority. And he will have money to float in the next stock round if he chooses to. CNO heading west towards Chicago, buying a single two train, and Beard Brew heading East towards Lancaster probably will also just buy the single two train. NYNH, always interesting to see how this player chooses to lay this tract and will lay track that is friendly to the NYC, but also not terrible for the BM depending on who floats first and how the operating order works out. So leaving opportunity for both companies. And we'll probably see a single two train here. 
in higher level 1830 games, there is a little bit of a standoff or a prisoner's dilemma about who will buy another two train first, because once you have bought two trains into one company, that gives one of the other companies the ability to buy into the threes and buy their privates. This kind of standoff typically favors the CNO player, as they will be running for the most uh, revenue with $70 with just one two train. It does hurt the PRR player somewhat, as they are running for a measly $30. Beard, uh, Bedford has the option of floating the BNO here. If he does so, he will be rusting his own private and also opening up these other companies to uh, buy into the three and get their privates and float companies in SR3. So a little bit disincentivized from doing that, probably we'll see him spread his cash around and buy paying shares as a result. He does have the most money, so if he invests all of it, he will definitely be going last in priority into SR3 and potentially opening himself up for a dump of a company that's been looted, which would also tie up all of his liquidity in those dump shares and potentially losing the BNO. So he needs to be a little bit careful and considerate in what he does here. Buying the CNO, that is the company that will be paying the most. Triple J is maxed out on the CNO, does have money for a share, and will probably pick up an NYNH as that will be paying the second most, which is what he does. Beard Brew and Agrajag have no money. They sell down a share, particularly Beard Brew, uh, because that company doesn't pay very much, and try and pick up a better paying share. And he picks up the higher paying CNO. Will we see Agrajag do the same? No. Bedford continuing to invest and may just buy one share in each company which is look like what he's doing. So now has some paying shares in addition to his private income. CNO, will he continue to head west towards Chicago? Almost certainly, and runs his single train and pays it out. NYNH will probably lay that Albany tile and does, running his single train and paying out. BR PRR should be heading towards Lancaster and tokens just for safety sake and looks like they will also just pay out. It is not uncommon to see at least one of these players start withholding uh, when they have more heavy investment into their company. One, so that they can operate after the other companies in the next operating round and hopefully be able to buy in their privates in a situation where the others cannot. And also just to get some extra company cash as they're not losing all that much net worth early in the game but not what we see in this scenario. Triple J now has money for a share and will buy a PRR. Beard Brew, similarly investing in the CNO. This does in theory allow him to be dumped on, but the CNO uh, will be a little bit hard to loot for all of its cash and also is a pretty strong company, so maybe feeling safe there. Agrajag similarly has enough money and will buy a CNO. CNO is now sold out and will be floating up. Was already operating first in uh, operating order, but with this float up, we'll certainly be operating first, which is not always a desirable situation when you're hoping to be buying in privates. Bedford now with the most cash and will be spreading it around a little bit more. It does have the opportunity to buy and then sell here to tank the other player's value and then float the BNO, which it looks like he is on his way towards. So rather than just buying one share of the NYNH and tanking the rest of the companies, he could have bought more shares and tanked them sequentially. He will almost certainly be going last in priority regardless. He does have to worry a little bit about putting people too deep into the yellow and putting a lot of market shares in there because that can be a long-term benefit to the companies. But he's also thinking that these companies are now, if he's floating, going to be able to buy in their private and hope to float a second company. So putting company shares into the market does uh, reduce the ability of the presidents to sell out of their first company and raise that liquidity. So uh, half of one or, or half a dozen or six of another um, in terms of weighing those risks and benefits. Triple J out of cash, passing. Assume the other players will also pass and Bedford will be floating the B&O. So we will move quickly through this stock round. Bedford going last in priority. So Triple J does mix it up a little bit, sells down a CNO, 
hoping to go last in priority or last in operating order, which he has now um, achieved unless the other players respond and has not lost priority as Bedford still has a share to buy. Buying a paying share and we will see if the other players let him get away with that. Bedford buying his last share. The other players are passing and Bedford, he could sell down a single share of the B&O here, but he has already sold out of all the other companies. Uh, so it really doesn't have much to invest in. If he did sell down here, he would save himself a few bucks in terms of falling back on that share, but uh, probably doesn't care that much. B&O now is in a little bit of a rough position. The B&O company typically runs in this situation where it floats a little bit after the PRR and then runs the risk of not being able to get in that north track if the PRR is motivated to defend it. So the B&O may try and lay towards uh, Philadelphia and Trenton and hope to get into that company into that track on green assuming that the green trains will break and the CNA will be bought in which is probably a pretty safe assumption in this uh, operating ground. Alternatively can upgrade Baltimore oh sorry cannot upgrade Baltimore we're still in yellow. Alternatively could lay a track down into Washington which is something we've been seeing a lot of players do or could just basically hope uh, to lay a sharp turn towards Lancaster, hope that the green trains don't break until after the PRR operates, and then hope for a quick upgrade into Lancaster. That is a little risky. You're kind of depending on other players to play the way you're expecting, uh, but little ventured, little gained. B&O does take the safe route, lays into Washington, and we'll be buying at least one two train here. Did not lay the token, so we probably will just see a single two. This opens up the threes for the other players. Does the NY and H want to pay for the other threes, or other twos and the three in order to buy in its privates? Agrajag does have some fairly juicy privates, and we will see. Runs his single train and does not buy any trains or his privates. PRR, now with track towards Pittsburgh being his only option, does lay that and does not buy into the threes. So the CNO is left with that opportunity and we'll see if he takes it. Looks like he will and then we'll buy in his privates. Triple J now with priority quite a bit of liquid cash and shares to sell if he likes to float. If he does want to float maybe seeing the NYC as we saw that friendly track from the NY and H which is what happens. Beard Brew now with a little bit of extra cash and no risk of a dump on the CNO as a result of those market shares, but may want to watch that um, just to make sure. And he will actually invest further. Oh, sorry, he does sell the CNO, so protecting himself from the dump in the future and will instead be buying an NYNH share. Agrojag just buying some of the shares that have been sold. and Bedford buying the CNO does still have a good run. We'll probably be running for the most in the first operating round of the next set. Triple J, will he just continue to float the NYC? It looks like it. Beard Brew still has some money and buys a PRR, buying it from his IPO rather than the market. The other two players don't have much cash, would have to sell shares to buy, and are happy to sit on their cash. Triple J just floating the NYC now. And it is floated. Does he sell down to buy another share? Could in theory buy CNO, but it looks like he will pass there. Bedford operating first, and as a result of not having laid the sharp turn on I-18, does not have an opportunity to upgrade into Lancaster. So we will see if he tries to rush for that later now. Instead, upgrading Baltimore, this does make it pretty likely that he will be able to get to the north, either running west or running east into Lancaster, but whether or not he's able to get a token into Lancaster remains to be seen. And runs his single train, does buy a three, actually buys two threes, so that will accelerate the train development a little bit, makes it a little bit more likely that we will see a four come out and potentially rust one of the two trains in these other companies. NYC now operating for the first time, probably will upgrade up Albany, does, and will he buy two three trades here to force the four? 
looks like he does, so we will almost certainly be seeing the NYNH buy the first four train here, leaving the PRR to fall back. NYNH does not lay any track, which is a little bit interesting. You would have expected them to lay southwest towards Reading and Allentown, uh, but does secure Albany with a token. Ian buys the first four, rusting his own two, but forcing the PRR to not have any trains for the next operating round. Also buying in his private, again, has the opportunity to buy in the private in the next operating round and get an extra $20 of private income, uh, but I guess values that company money a little bit more than the capital for his presidency. Is the NYNH totally out of money? Has $10, so we'll need to float to rescue that company. PRR falling back, as we mentioned, does have the opportunity to buy in his private and upgrade the Philadelphia tile. Alternatively, can upgrade Lancaster and lays track to the Baltimore. So basically saying that he thinks the CNO is a little bit ahead and giving the Baltimore the opportunity for that Lancaster token in the next OR. We'll be forced to buy a train here and passes his companies. CNO now probably will be laying into Pittsburgh, but unfortunately will not be able to secure that Lancaster tile as it was not upgraded. Instead, we'll be doing a little bit of a creative play here and laying the Scranton tile with his D&H. This allows him to bypass Lancaster later in the game and hopefully get into Philadelphia and or New York through Reading and Allentown. So a nice use of the teleport there, sees the danger at Lancaster and um, is able to bypass it. The token he laid was his $40 token, not his $100 token, so a little bit of a lost value there, because if you can lay your $100 token, uh, having already used your cheaper token with this private, you uh, save your company a little bit money. But not the end of the world. Running a three train does have three stops, and we'll pay that out. He is shuffling trains a little bit. We'll now have three trains in the CNO, so expecting to have routes for the three trains either through Pittsburgh or by doing some funny business at Scranton. He also lays the Burlington, Burlington track, so the CPR will not be a safe suitcase. BNO now running two trains, probably will be upgrading Lancaster and may see a token there. He does. So now has two runs for three trains and pays that out. NYC now has some choices here. Will he try and cooperate with the CNO and run towards Scranton? Will he run to New York hoping for a quick upgrade from the NYNH? Or will he run south down to the Reading and Allentown? Looks like he is cooperating with the CNO and will just be running for 80. NYNH now uh, Again, can start running out of Albany or upgrade New York or head down to Reading and Allentown. Instead, upgrade Scranton. It does give it a few extra dollars in its run, but if you're just looking for the most money, uh, actually it does not have the cash to upgrade New York, so that makes sense. It does give a track point in some sense away to Triple J who's running the NYC and CNO and who would have been motivated to upgrade Scranton eventually anyways. So you may want to consider looking towards the future and upgrading the tile between Scranton and New Haven uh, the way you want it to ensure late game runs rather than just taking the extra 10 bucks for this one run. And has very little cap company cash but does choose to pay this out. CNO now lays the Reading and Allentown. This blocks the Lancaster companies out of New York South by the DIT and ensures that the NYC almost certainly will have two runs into New York, one into the South, one into the North. CNO running three trains uh, and paying out 150. PRR single train, limited track options at this point probably is not super motivated to link up with the CNO and will be laying the Camden will be laying the Philadelphia tile now that he's bought in the Camden Amboy. 
unfortunately, as he was forced to buy that four without a run, he's not going to be able to buy the CNA in for max value, and we'll just be settling for 254. Had he been able to run in the last operating round, he probably would have withheld and then been able to recoup, recoup all of that uh, cash by buying his private. But does have a reasonable run now and pays that out. Beard Brew now with a fair amount of cash on hand, closely followed by Agrajag. The other two players are much less liquid going into the stock round five. And I expect we will see both of these players most likely floating companies at some point during the stock round. Whether or not they choose to trash some shares first, they will have to determine and show us. Uh, Beard Brew does have his choice of companies here, so it has a little bit more motivation than potentially Agrajag will to initially secure a presidency. Agrajag may see the good presidency go away, uh, which in this case is probably the URI, um, and then may just say, well, nobody else is floating, so I have all the time in the world now to trash shares and then float a company. But we'll see if Beard Brew takes the URI or the BNM. And instead, just buying a B&O for the little bit of $12 upgrade from an IPO to market share. Agrajag is selling down and will have his choice of companies, does take the Erie. Bedford just buying the paying CNO shares. CNO has uh, almost permanent train money, has two threes, and has pretty good map position, so definitely a company with legs that you would like to get in on the ground floor for. Triple J also buys the CNO. CNO is sold out. Beard Brew now buying another BNO. And now will sell. So he has tanked the BNO's stock value slightly, gotten a few extra bucks in his coffers from you know the arbitrage between the IPO and the market but has not changed turn order. So sacrifice the opportunity to be starting the Erie and will be relegated to starting the B&M now. Erie is floating. Bedford buying a PRR. Now has no longer has enough cash for the companies or shares. Triple J probably last share for him as well and buys a B&O. So this is the thing that we've commented in the past is that yes, Beard Brew hurt Bedford's net worth a little bit and also took some money uh, from the IPO, but he has given Triple J now an opportunity for a share that's cheaper than it would otherwise have been. Beard Brew taking NY, selling an NYH now has exactly enough money to par at 90 if he chooses to. and now has the money to par at 100. And we see him do that with the PNM. Agrajag, loading the Erie still. Other players appear to be passing. Well, I was gonna say pass, but it looks like Triple J has depleted the NYC's coffers, left it with a single three train, and feels comfortable now that the other players have invested in their companies to sell out of it. So we may be seeing the NYC just withhold uh, for a couple of operating rounds to get a little bit more cash. It doesn't have quite enough money at this juncture to float a company, but if he sells the B&O, would have a money for a very low float, very low par of the CPR. Selling a CNO, will he also sell the B&O? Does not, but is just comfortable to reserve that presidency for now. Beard Brew, probably will see him float the B&M. Looks like it. And Erie is one share away. Triple J is investing a little bit further in the CPR. So maybe hoping to actually float this company and not just to sit on the presidency. B&M continuing to buy its shares. Erie passing. CPR still buying shares. We'll have enough to float. Beard Brew almost floated. Agrajag sells down one of his own shares. This does mean that it will be operating even a little bit later, um, but it was already operating behind the CPR. So 
or it was operating in front of the CPR, sorry. So now we'll be operating after the CPR. So these players are carefully watching these four trains and hoping to manipulate their operating order so that they end up with one of the fives or the ability to buy the first, the last four and the first five. Agujag also selling a BNO. Oh, sorry, buying a BNO. So taking the cash he took from the Erie shares and investing it. Bedford continues to pass. Triple J continues to float the CPR, and Beard Brew buying his last B&M share, Triple J buying the last CPR. He does have the opportunity to sell down a CPR here to operate after the Erie if he thinks that's important, which he does, and will instead buy an NYH share. The rest of the players are passing. Beard Brew will enter the next stock round of priority. B&M... <coughs> Unfortunately, because the yellow tile has been laid on F18, is a little bit worried about heading into Providence, has a very good chance of having track laid on F18 that never allows it to run through that tile, so has some hard decisions to make here. The BNM is a company that oftentimes struggles with a late par and limited track as a result of this. We'll see what he decides to do. BM upgrading Boston does give him a little bit of a higher run, keeps his options open, but does unfortunately make it even less likely that he will be able to secure track uh, into Scranton or into New York. BM obligated to buy a train here, does have another company that he could potentially shuffle with, but that company only has the single four, so if he buys that train, the PRR will not be running and will be falling back. Buys a four, so there is one four left in the bank. This does give either the Erie or the CPR the ability to buy straight into the fives, and we'll see how that decision plays out. B&M running two three trains, kind of limited track uh, ability here. Just upgrading Washington for a little extra income and pays it out. Erie, first operation, starts laying towards the north. Not confident that it can get into Scranton because the NYC is right there. So Erie may be hoping to lay some track to get into that second double O city in Brown. Buys the last four and first five. Brown tiles are now available. The CPR does not have the cash to buy both of the remaining brown tiles, but can buy a train from the CNO and get both five trains that way as the NYNH is operating in between but has nowhere near enough cash. So Triple J almost certainly will be ending up with two five trains here. Three companies and two five trains is a pretty strong position. NYNH just upgrading the Albany track. This does give the B&M player a little bit more time to hopefully rush over to Scranton and we will see if he succeeds in that. CNO now so the CPR actually neglected to buy a train out of the CNO, which means that it will not be buying the third and final five train. I'm not entirely sure about the wisdom of that decision. I think that if you have the money for the five train, it makes sense to lose the run on the three and then snap up that five. Uh, but we will see. Upgrade in New York for 80 and running his two three trains pays that out prr now does have the opportunity to take that philadelphia upgrade and ensure it's run into new york south which is what we see prr is in a little bit of rough situation here beard brew only has enough money for one permanent train in the bnm and will have to eventually have two of them as he has two companies so may start seeing some withholds from the prr not too far from the yellow zone of the market so may try and withhold twice here to get into yellow alternatively it could just be you know cash poor hoping to get some money to invest in the stock round and pays that out this does mean he will not be yellow in the next stock round nyc last company to operate will be upgrading new york a final time and running his three train withhold says he only has 20 percent of the company and is looking for a third permanent train down the road. B&M here, or B&O here, is train locked, has money for a permanent train, but unfortunately doesn't have the room for it. 
lays the Lancaster tile, and will be running his two trains and pays that out. B and M. Will we see the Providence tile here? If he had laid it last time, he would have now been able to get into that uh, New York Scranton corridor. Unfortunately, not able to now. And we'll be able to buy the last five because the Triple J player did not uh, purchase it with the CNO. I'm still questioning the wisdom of that. NYNH running two four trains and upgrading Scranton. It does not have a token to leave in Scranton as already spent in an Albany and pays out for 300. CNO, seeing the impending threat from the BNM, is able to just lay some track that ensures that the BNM will never run through that tile. So the BNM is now forced to try and head north if it wants to lay any meaningful track in the future. Erie, heading towards Rochester, may see a quick token there, does, and runs a single train. CPR now will be linking up with Albany almost certainly, and runs. PRR has been tokened out of New York by the NYC, and has a little bit of limited track options as a result. Could see a upgrade to Baltimore just for a little extra revenue here, or it could be heading north towards the double O's. Do see the upgrade in Baltimore. And will we see any withholds instead paying out? NYC laying towards that double O, hoping to eventually get a run through those 50 value cities straight into New York with no dits. That would be pretty lucrative for a five or six train. And completes the domination of the New York area of the CNO and the NYC with a token on Scranton. So there will be no players, basically other than Beard Brew, or sorry, Triple J, running through the New York tiles. NYC is continuing to withhold, now in the yellow, and working on his way uh, to a private train, permanent train. Still needs two of them for his three companies. Entering the next stock round, Bedford leads the uh, pack with money to invest, and Beard Brew will be buying a PRR share, given that that company does have a permanent train. Agadrag jumping on the PRR as well. Bedford, so all the players are going for the PRR, and Triple J breaks the trend by buying his own CNO. This company is pretty close to a permanent train and has excellent track. Now investing in the BNO and completing the PRR. Triple J also hopping on the BNO. So we have three companies that are sold out. And Beard Brew sells down the BNM, realizing that this company is kind of dead to rights in terms of track and we'll be hoping to buy better shares with this money, assuming that nobody else really wants to spend the time taking over the B&M. Taking a presidency is always nice for the share density, but this company really has poor prospects and does not have enough money for its own private train. The CPR looks like to be the next target of everyone's investments. We do see a little action on the NYNH, and Triple J happy to take an Erie. Beard Brew will be going last in priority almost certainly now, meaning Agrojag will have priority as a result of his decision to sell out of the B&M. Just buying paying shares, Agrojag taking his last share of the Erie, and Bedford taking the B&M share. Probably not looking for the presidency, if I had to guess, just taking a share out of the market and uh, going to leave it so it cannot be dumped on him. Triple J. We'll start buying some of his yellow shares, likely still going to be withholding here, just helping to ensure his presidency is secure. Beard Brew sees this and also is looking to some of those yellow shares. As a minority investor and not in control of the company, you do have to worry a little bit that this presidency is going to be very incentivized to withhold, so these shares may not be paying in the very near future. The other players are seeing the value of the NYC, and Triple J out of money 
will pass. Beard Brew continues and buys an Erie, so we may see the Erie sell out too. Bedford electing to sit on $100. Doesn't have too many safe investments, is a little bit worried about dumps here. He could have bought that yellow NYC share, which I would have liked to have seen in his position, although as we commented, may not be paying out, but nice to secure it for later in the game as it will likely be staying yellow until the end here. The remainder of the players pass. Beard Brew, as a result, is sitting on $200 um, and is falling behind in share count. Share Counts is led by Agrajag at 18 and Triple J at 17. Triple J does have a extra presidency on Agrajag and a yellow company, so has a little more potential for shares moving forward. Entering stock round, operating round six, Beard Brew or Bedford will be starting with the BNO, and this company's track options are very limited. Upgrading Pittsburgh does have a token, but is on the hook for a six train at least, may not be eager to spend it does in fact spend it and will be looks like paying out cno also operating three two three trains will probably be heading towards that double o city instead upgrades the brown city this does give the potential to the cpr as well as potentially the erie to get into new york in the future through that 120 dollar x and y and h just running his trains Erie upgrades the B&O, or not the B&O, the double O tile, and will increase his revenue as a result. Unfortunately, this gives a very easy way for CNO and NYC to run into that track, uh, but the Erie has limited options. We do see a withhold from the Erie, and he is shuffling trains with the NYNH. The NYNH was able to run that train before he shuffled it over, so no lost efficiency there. And as a result, the NYNH is very close to the first six. So may very well be seeing the six train come out the next operating round. I think it's important that someone does that or makes it come out as soon as possible. Otherwise, we will see Triple J sitting on three, three trains and happy to just run them and gradually make his way up to a permanent train. So pushing that six is very important to stop a runaway win. Bedford doesn't love that the six will be coming out, but uh, is not in danger of a bankruptcy. Does Bedford, the B&O, have a D run? Not really. So he will be looking for hopefully getting that six train, the second six. CPR, not sure where he's hoping to lay there. PRR running two trains and will finally link up the CNO and be able to run his two trains. He pays that out. BM, this is uh, a player that has really no track potential in the game, may be seeing some withholds as he only has 20% of the company. And does withhold it. Still not really that close to permanent train money, but a little bit closer than he was. NYC. Probably laying towards that double O city and probably withholding. And does. So he's in the orange now and is much closer to a permanent train than he had been at the start of the following, the prior operating rounds. BO, probably the last time we'll see these three trains run, may want to withhold here to prepare himself um, as if the if the NY and H buys the first six. We may very well see Triple J hop on the second six with one of his companies. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like both of his companies will be operating before the NYNH, so may not be able to secure that. BNO just optimizing its routes with a second run into Philadelphia and does pay it out. CNO. Running a single train and withholding could buy the first six year, which I neglected or missed in my analysis just a minute ago, and does. So the NYNH will be most likely getting the second six. Well, actually, he's put him in a position to buy the second six with the CPR. So well played to uh, Triple J. I missed that a withhold would get him the first six. And 
and he buys the second one. So we have uh, a forced D-train purchase in the next OR, which will put the other two players on the hook for at least one D-train, and Beard Brew, yeah, just one D-train each. So Agrajag and Beard Brew are in very rough situations. They will be forced to buy a D, which is going to force them to sell um, shares, and they neither one of them has D-train track. So it looks very convincingly that Triple J will probably be taking this game. He is technically behind in net worth, but he has no train liability. He has three presidencies, a orange company, and all the rest of his players will be falling back in the next OR um, or closely. Yeah, they will all be falling back as the B&O will be forced to buy the D before either of the other companies operate. So looking very good for Triple J. PRR, despite knowing that he will be on the hook for a D train, does pay out with a PRR. NYNH has no real interesting track delay and passes and pays out. We'll be looking for a D train as well shortly. Agrajag, not sure where he's heading to. Um, not going to be able to go anywhere interesting south as Pittsburgh is tokened and upgrading this yellow tile here will be quite easy to keep him out. B&M, probably the last run of this four train and doesn't even upgrade Providence. I assume there is a tile available for him to do that. There is not, so that's why. The uh, train runs, and does he withhold here? He does. So very worried about that upcoming D train purchase. NYC does have a permanent train now, maybe withholding just to get further into the orange. Triple J does not have priority, so it needs to be careful um, that he doesn't give other players those cheap orange shares. Looking to bypass Montreal and start opening up the northwest of the map for his uh, NYC. And he's still withholding. Last operating round of this set, we will see the B&O be forced to buy the D-Train here. Does, again, have not the best D-Train run. We'll be able to run down through Baltimore, up through Lancaster, and potentially down into Chicago. So not the worst D-Train run ever, but uh, probably not enough to bring you back into the game if you have to sell significantly for this D-Train. He upgrades that uh, tile here to eventually get into Chicago, hopefully, and has to fall back. He will be buying the D-Train with a single stock share, or stock sale. So he didn't have to sell very many shares, but as a result of buying the D, we'll have very little cash entering the next stock round. So we'll not be able to take advantage and buy up a lot of the shares that are certain to be sold down by these other two players. Triple J, happy to sit on his permanent trains and is just basically cooperating by opening up the west of the map. NYNH. Not entirely sure what the significance of that track lay is, uh, but does allow it to loop around uh, to the south. <coughs> PRR will be looking for a D train here and starts heading towards Chicago. He is able to buy that without any stock sales, stock sales but again we'll be entering the next stock round with very limited cash as a result of that purchase triple j looking to link up with the track heading into that double o and the erie will also be looking for a d train here so now has the track to run into new york if it wants to lay this 120 dollars token but the company will be you know, depleting its coppers with this D-Train purchase, so may have to rely on another player to lay that track for it. And only had to sell a single share. So none of the players had to sell that many shares to buy their train, but they had to forego buying shares pretty much in the upcoming stock round as a result.
BNM does have a permanent train and is still unable to upgrade Providence. He is choosing to pay out now. Uh, still only owns, I believe, 20% of that company, yes. Forced to pay out or else he would not be able to buy a share in the next operating round. NYC, been seeing this company withhold quite a bit. As a result, does have cash for the upgrade of the Hamilton track if he chooses to. Instead, completes the run for the CPR into New York. This does help the Erie as well, uh, who has a D-train. and pays that out. So looking at stock round seven, the only player with any significant cash is Triple J. He already has a uh, net worth lead and is not near exceeding his certificate limit as a result of his Brown NYC. So he will buy a ton of shares here and as a result will likely be winning this game. I think that we can skip, we're not gonna see any dumps here everybody has permanent trains so we can skip to the end of this stock round and just reassess there but we may be able to just end the game here as I don't see a way for Triple J to lose. Triple J sitting on the last share in the NYC we've talked about this before but leaving that share unpurchased uh, prevents the company from floating up, which is counterproductive if you're hoping to stay in the brown phase. So at the end of that stock round has met his cert limit and is at 24 shares, which is uh, significantly ahead of any of his competitors. The competitors are all at least $500 behind. So he is in a very comfortable position. The other players are hoping that their D trains basically can pay for themselves and allow them to catch up, but they are so far behind in shares, the D train runs would have to be absolutely massive for that to occur. And if we just briefly evaluate their track, so we're looking at the BNO, the Erie, and the PRR. BNO will be running uh, this loop de loop and hoping to get into Chicago. PRR has a little bit of a worse run as a result of this uh, Baltimore single whole city. And then the Erie can run through New York and maybe eventually into Chicago. Um, so the B&O has the best run and he will be running for 70, 130, 140, 190, 230, 260, uh, 330. 330 is not an impressive run and will almost certainly not be enough to come back from the deficit uh, of $500 that he is already behind alone. Triple J does have a share in the B&O, so that even further decreases the net worth or net gain the B&O will be providing to Bedford. So based on that analysis, uh, I don't see a way for Triple J to lose this game. Even if the NY and H is dumped on him, which is possible, um, he will be able to probably afford to buy a train by withholding on the NY and H, which he's going to be incentivized to do anyways to keep it yellow. So, yeah, um, there's $11,000 in the bank. We will certainly see a couple more operating rounds, but let's just skip to the end here, as I think that Triple J has this basically in the bag. We are stopping the game at operating round seven, and it ends up going into operating round nine. So there would have been three full operating rounds that we are neglecting. You see that there is some further track development, but the outcome is as we suspected, uh, Triple J winning the game by a fair margin. Agrijag ends up coming in second. He is the player running the Erie and the NY and H. So it looks like the Erie is eventually able to get some reasonable runs in terms of running through this double O, looping around, coming back, and then running down into Chicago or the Gulf through Columbia. Uh, probably ended up with a decent run as a result, but the other players, the B&O is just running the tile that we kind of expected, and the PRR may have a better run by running up to the north and into these double O cities, but regardless, none of them were able to run for enough to overtake Triple J. So, well played to Triple J. I think that shows the value of sometimes using your privates to 
leapfrog Lancaster and get into New York by that uh, method. And then also the value of just having three companies. So even if you can't suitcase the CPR, as long as you're not gonna bankrupt yourself by starting it, the extra control of the train rush and the development of track is oftentimes enough to put you over the edge for the victory. So well played to Triple J. I think that this was a fairly high level game. I know that Triple J and Beard Brew are two very respected 1830 players. Less familiar with the other two, but didn't see uh, you know too many low level play from them. So uh, appreciate the game. Thought it was very interesting. We will see you back next time.